See you soon, baboon. Wait, spice it up. See you soon, bitch. Too spicy, too spicy. Oh god, I sent it. Okay, it's fine. Hello to the five to ten people who watch my videos. Today's video is a process of a mini painting of a false hydra mini. Uh, I wrote a little backstory in like a journal-esque type-esque way explaining the kind of creature or like a spotting of the creature and what it does. It was originally for a D&D campaign that my boyfriend runs and I wanted to paint it a certain way and take it on a journey. Definitely got frustrated at times and kind of cried over it. But that's fine. That's art. Alright, I'm gonna start reading it. Okay, our story begins with the main character just journaling as he's resting at a stop in the forest. It describes it. I'll just read it. <laughs> Saturday, August 12th, 16.30 p.m. Currently logging this while staying at one of my beloved resting spots for a couple of days now. All I can see around me is breathtakingly gorgeous nature scenery. Free-flowing, perfect green grass, falling and rising with the breeze, the swaying willow tree in the middle of the surrounding forest with a bench attached to it by chain. This particular bench is famous for a lookout point the military used back in the day. It's pretty aged now with flowers and an abundance of different species of plants that have overgrown the area and the bench itself. It's become quite beautiful in the way of nature reclaiming the earth once humanity has left it. Seeing as how the military hasn't been here for some time, I figured it would be a good spot to hide out at. I started a new job recently at a construction company, which it's been alright, circumstances considered Definitely different from, um, from what I'm used to, but in a good way. It's relaxing and relieving to do some building and not worrying about much. Especially now that I've got my hands on some good flour. Not just flour, but a whole wide variety of drugs are available to me. There are some I will never touch, but I have tried some others before. The type of drugs in question tonight are supplied by some good buddies I'm spending tonight with. They brought, along with flour, LSD, shrooms, ecstasy, and some others that are not for me. Tonight is the night we're finally going to do it. We're going to open that agent team. My group of buddies are the drug rug. Supplies any type of drug you can imagine, but don't ask where he gets it from. The wild one. Every day is an adventure to him. And with him. The responsible one. He makes sure that we don't destroy ourselves with shenanigans. The edge lord. He tries too hard, especially at making just bad jokes. And finally, the fighter myself. 17.30 p.m. Once we finished setting up with our tents up and a fire crackling, we ate in preparation for what's ahead of us. We settled down around the campfire, and the wild one, naturally the one who suggested tonight's adventure, started telling us of the legend of the ancient tomb. He said to truly be able to experience it to the full extent, we need to be disconnected from this reality and shed our current desires and attachments. We teased that he wanted us to become monks, but his seriousness casca cascading around his face didn't falter. We ceased jokes quickly as he started speaking quietly, hanging his head. His hair fell to his face. We scooted closer just to catch what he says next. This is not a fool's escapade here, he warned. If you do not believe this, or at least of all, respect it, 
then you do not belong here. We collected ourselves and shifted uncomfortably in our seats. He continued on, describing a past military experiment that took place involving the tomb. They've tried to infiltrate the tomb before with great failure. They tried again with a drug that's no longer available today. But the likeness of it was that of THC, LSD, shrooms, ecstasy, all combined. Hence, our reason for bringing such drugs along tonight. The drug was said to shed our current reality from our eyes and see the ultimate truth for what it really is. He ended the story there and added with a shit-eating grin, tonight we're going to discover the truth that the government wants to keep hidden. The drug rug paces us with each drug as he knows best on how they affect humans. We start off with LSD except the responsible one who states while well, rolling his eyes that someone needs to look after us. 18.30 p.m. We waited about an hour before taking the next one, Shurens. All the while we've been hitting the bud, chilling and sharing random stories, laughing with the occasional bouts of paranoia. By this time, the acid had hit me full force, and it was difficult for me to feel anything real. My mind was going a million miles an hour, thinking of every, every scenario that could happen tonight. I pondered the legends, and if they're true, or if we're just wasting our time. Like, we're just getting fucked up for no reason. I guess the only time will tell. The fire then captures my attention. It's incredibly vibrant, and I can physically see the heat waves coming off of it and landing on my body. My body. It looks so weirdly stretched out, like my head is so far away from my body. I slowly squeeze my hands to see if I'm still real. I can barely feel them. I force my eyes away from the enticing fire, and they wander into the dark forest around us. The flames are still dancing, clearly in the field of my vision. I blink repeatedly and rub my eyes to make them go away. Suddenly, the haunting image of the flames transforms into the shape that's the likeness of seems like a vibrating, angry, hungry face of a monster. It vibrates in and out of clear reality. I violently shake my head, shut my eyes, and count quickly to ten. I peek through my lids and let out a long sigh of relief. I hold my head up and finally take notice of everyone staring at me. They ask if I'm okay and somehow their faces seem to pop out of existence and then right in my face. It's way too overwhelming and I can feel every inch of my skin crawl. I feel an immense need to get the hell out of there so I stand up almost too fast and I assure them that I'm fine, that I just need some space. I have marched, have run away into the heavy darkness as the fire fades from my view. I hear them laughing in the distance, probably at me, the assholes. I look ahead into the forest, trying to keep a hold of reality, but it feels like everything is warping. I can feel it to my core. There's random patterns developing of all sorts of colors, fractals of energy and remnants of the real world. Every, every tree is detailed to an incredible magnification. 
so so much that it did. It's difficult for me to look at one for longer than a few seconds. The earth and air around me is tunneling and spinning and it feels like I might collapse at any moment. In fact, right before I do, I hear the most chilling, unreal roar. 1930 p.m. I woke up to someone softly tapping my left cheek. So my eyes started to slowly flutter open. I quickly sat up, which was a mistake. I leaned over to heave up any and everything in my stomach. My group of friends encompassed me with concerned faces, and they scolded me not to disappear like that again. I vehemently agreed with them. They checked to make sure I'll be fine with the third and final drug of the night. I take it anyway, nothing can prevent me from this long-awaited quest. We smoke some more flour to calm more nerves before setting out to the tomb. It's supposed to be an hour hike, so the responsible one was sure to stock us with snacks and water. Soon enough into the journey, I was definitely thankful he came along, as were the rest of them. As we trench along, we're laughing at every little thing. The way a tree branch is shaped, two squirrels chasing each other, trying to mate the whistling of the wind, our faces. Suddenly, we all feel a frigid breeze, which would be fine if it was during the colder months. But it was 80 degrees earlier. We all shiver, and I feel a great amount of dread crawling up the back of my neck. I look around, and everyone seems to feel it too, even the responsible one. We debate whether to turn back or not, but we've come this far, so no point in turning back now. We're almost there. We can all feel it. 20.30 p.m. As we approached the ancient tomb, reality became extremely distorted for us. The responsible one even noted how hard it was to focus right in front of him. I blinked slowly and was transported to the front of the tomb in an instant. It was like space folded in around me and I was meant to be here. I don't know how else to describe it. I frantically looked around in a state of panic, feeling the beads of sweat pouring over and down my body. No one was to be found. I shouted for them and unexpectedly they shouted back. It sounded like they were right in front of me. What the I whispered to myself. I turned toward the tomb door and inspected it. Above was an engraving that stated, Spirit Tomb. Another engraving on the door wrote, Sacrificing for you. Below that was an indention that looked slightly like a hand, so naturally I touched my right hand cautiously to it. My vision was clouded with light and a like second while voices were whispering in my ears. Gravity is life pulling us to the grave. Heaven is a void of light. You are tied down by your emotions, spiraling through the creeping void. The tomb is open. Anyone that comes near will retreat in fear of what's inside. Devoured by failure, we have determined that you are not worthy. The ghosts that haunt this earth are different than you think. No ethereal plane, just incomprehensible realities. You will feel no pain. Head back to a dreamless sleep. Catatonic unreality, anomalies of the mind. There is no wrong, there is no right. They have returned. My hand was thrown back from the door with a force great enough that made me stumble back and to avoid falling. The door swung, no, it slammed, open by itself, and the light permeated through. I am in the doorway. Tomorrow brings a new plague. I can see the end of it all. I had an overwhelming sense that I should not be creeping down these stairs. 
I should not be here at all. But I ignored all those safe instincts and the nauseous feeling created from fear. There was still a premonition in the back of my head that told me I should check it out. Get rid of my fear and travel down the wavy stairs. It steadily got darker, but I didn't even notice until I realized I couldn't see the next step, let alone my own hand. I couldn't see anything but darkness. I got that same dizzy feeling that I had in the forest when I heard that roar. Everything felt like it was vibrating. My body, the walls, the floor, even the air. Waves of light came into sight out of nowhere and there are finally no more steps to go down. I am in the tomb. I am in the spirit tomb. I stumbled from my journal and began hurriedly, you no know, frantically, writing my endeavors down because I had a sense I want to be able to very soon. The waves of light are enough to see here for now. The voices from earlier creep back into my head, not as voices this time, as thoughts, as visions. They're all talking and showing me images inside my mind. Creatures from beyond reality, offering ecstasy, meet the new normal, escape the bonds of consciousness, slip through, slide in, can't believe what I've seen, no one should do what I have done, abandon all I held in my heart, violent beings without form, everyone will feel the same pain, sorry will never be enough, it comes in ways. I hear the roar again, closer, more haunting, and ear piercingly booming. My legs feel like tremors moving on their own toward the roar. This is it. I haven't passed out this time. I will make it. 21.30 p.m. The waves of light are increasing in vibrancy and frequency. The voices pass through me once more, without body. They are illusions only, shadows without substance. They will not pass through, for they do not exist. They do not exist, unreal appearances only. They are shadows, illusions, not the ghosts of reality. They are lies, falsehoods, specters without body. They are to be ignored. That war again, it fails us. Though, if it went on for any longer than a few seconds, it might rupture my eardrums. I reach the true doorway of light and dimensions. The gravity pull to it is inescapable. And in the next second, I'm engulfed in bending light and colors. I keep entering and exiting my body, vibrating intensely. This is truly unreality of the true reality. I hear and feel the roar inside my skull. I look inside and horror. The creature, unlike anything I could imagine, stares back with empty, dark eye sockets, unblinking, drooling a yellow, sickly slime. Many heads, body like that of a large dinosaur snaking around itself with random appendages hooking up. It's like it's meaty reddish pink flesh is inside out fanning into itself. The heads circling around, facing through each other. It looks starving and I only just now realized how close it had gone in, in a matter of seconds. Its gross arms and hands sticking out help it crawl, not unlike a spider. It opens their mouths wide, unhinging their jaws, and the terrible roars start again. It comes in days. 5 a.m. My eyes shot open to the trees above me, daylight barely peeking through. My experience left me with it. Only the dead note tears 
in the fabric. Look in the shadows in the doorway of unreality. He says his name is Death. The truth is, he is worse. Experience the true reality beyond the curtain, beyond all sight and sound, consciousness collapsing all around us. This is the veil being lifted. They waited, washing away all the sand, washing away all the love. The days of darkness, the absence of light, washing away all the love. Wrath of God, gaze of the old, it comes and waits. Before I truly come down from all the drugs, I'm going to record something after I finish writing this, in case this becomes destroyed slash lost. I need to get this out to warn people. This strange mission is found on a camera resting by the journal. But this is transmission begins. I, 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 uh, I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, okay, okay. I, I'm a former employee of the military. I, I was let go on a med medical discharge about a month ago and and I've been kind of running across the country and I don't know where to start. They're they're gonna um, they'll triangulate on this position really soon. Okay. Um huh. Okay, what well, we're thinking of as as aliens. They are extra dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the um, space program that they made contact contact with. They are not, uh, they're not what they claim to be. Uh, they infiltrated a, a lot of aspects of, of, of the military establishment. Uh, the disasters that are coming, they, the military, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the government knows about them, and there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could become, they, they could begin moving the population to now. They're, they're not, they want these major population centers wiped out, so that the few that are left will be more easily controllable. You know, there are, there are other dimensions. You know, are there other worlds all around us and we want to try to, try to make a, a, a window to look at us from the other side? Well, maybe not, not, not a window, but a, a doorway. These are not just my thoughts, the provisions. Not my thoughts. I, I do not control them. It's, it's not my thoughts. Transmission ends Sunday, August 13th, 9 a.m. Seems like it's the next day. The sunshine is glowing so beautifully through the bright green leaves of the trees. Birds are singing their lovely songs as other nature sounds envelop me, giving euphoric feelings of sweet bliss. I lay there for a minute before trying to piece together the previous night. I know I came here with a purpose. I look back at my crazy ramblings, but I just can't believe what I wrote and said. I wander the forest until finding a clearing with a campsite, campsite set up. There's no one around, it seems like, but this area feels and looks familiar. I shrug it off, feeling like it's no big deal for some reason. Nothing can bother me right now. I find this bench, overgrown in nature, and sit down on it, taking in the scenery around me in all its glory. Hairs on my neck stand up as a cold chill ran down my spine. I feel soft growling and giant footsteps shaking the bench. I look behind, above, side to side, but nothing to be found of the source. Eh, might be my, must be my brain fucking with the residual drugs from last night maybe. I decide not to worry about it. 
And then the journal ends right there. And it's hard for me to public speak. Ooh. Anxiety just from reciting from a journal and speaking. <laughs> a little easier having something to read from, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you liked this video of a little like story behind painting that's just kind of a work of fiction. I'll have all my socials and my art site in the link below, probably, if I remember. I hope so, because I'm saying this right now. And also, at the end of the video, I'll have all the info linked. Okay, bye!